gratitude. Gratitude, nourishment, and community. They all go to they all go together very very well. Gratitude, nourishment, and community. So it's very much gratitude to all of you for coming tonight, for everyone that's made it possible. In the backgrounds of all our lives, that's the community. So Hafiz, the poet, the 14th century. Persian Sufi poet says, stay close to anything that makes you glad that you are, you are alive. Stay close to anything that makes you glad that you are alive. So Hafiz is talking about a natural aliveness that's not dependent on the pleasures we seek of satisfying culturally, culturally conditioned desires for consumer goods, access to fast travel, intoxicants, and the multiple multitudes of other distractions that we, we seek and go after. And the writer and philosopher Charles Eisenstein describes humans generally as small, lonely, and consumptive. Uh, consumptive in the sense of consuming. So we don't we don't want to be small, lonely and consumptive like the culture is trying to force us into. But it, it's not surprising that we might find ourselves in this condition because the, our cultural, culture is one of disconnection, largely in superficiality. So there's a conventional form of gratitude conventional gratitude, as it is called, and which is about selecting things, the things that make you glad. That is one form of gratitude that is very beneficial. But we've also got to notice that we are selecting things that make us glad. We are leaving out other things in that form of gratitude. So we can learn to expand our awareness of gratitude from the limits of conventional gratitude. So what about the gratitude, what about expanding our gratitude for the things that we take for granted? It is much easier to complain and our minds are sadly often oriented to what is wrong rather than what is going well. And I remember when I moved from Melbourne to the far north coast of New South Wales, a long time, many decades ago with my partner. We bought some land to start a rural intentional community, which is where I still live. And the people here manage the land together and we grow about 70% of the food we eat. We harvest our firewood, we cut up fallen timber for building and shelving and other items. So there's an enormous amount to be grateful that is available from nature. And we forget about that. But there's another gratitude that I often feel because we make so much of the food we eat. When I stand in the kitchen and look around for the things that I need for cooking a dinner for everyone in the community, I'm filled with incredible gratitude because the jars above the stove are filled with herbs that are, drawn, that are grown, harvested, dried, and detwigged and stored and I know who did that and and I know what it takes for that to happen. So there's an enormous amount of gratitude. I go to the fridge and I get out a big round of cheese. There's an enormous amount of effort that goes into making a big round of cheese. So, so much gratitude for the commitment of the people here and the creatures that provide um, this food for us. But you don't have to live in an intentional community to have gratitude. We all live in community. And so we can have gratitude towards people and food. And you probably know the people that are in the shops where you get your things. And the food in your house that someone has made 
when you start to use it, someone has made an effort to get it into your house, or it might have been yourself that's got it there. You can be grateful to yourself as well. So are we instead bringing our attention to what has been forgotten to be bought or to some other thing that annoys us? It's very easy to go that way. But instead, we can bring our attention to gratitude for the work and thought that went into bringing such an intimate thing. Food is such an intimate thing into our life. We don't think of food as intimate, but it's enormously intimate, the thing that nourishes our body. When we think of things in this way, there's a much deeper connection with them. And so we have um, a small, a few phrases that we say before we eat that come from the, the Zen tradition. We say we are grateful for this food, the work of many hands and the sharing of many forms of life. That's something that we can carry with us all the time. So it, we need to be careful not to use our precious life force to see what's wrong and what is absent. Because you need to, we need to question ourselves, is this how we want to live? And being the upset one, that's quite a common identity to take on. I think I've talked about this before in retreats, the, the identity of the upset person. And it can give us a lot of juice to feel superior to others because they are failing to match up to our standards of whatever standards of perfection that we are holding them to. But it's really very poor quality juice compared to the depth of feeling that comes from the mind state of gratitude. And I have a story which some of you may heard, have heard about um, an experience of gratitude that I had some time ago. So f I think it's about five years ago, many people, including myself in the northern rivers of New South Wales, were campaigning to have a gas field free region to stop the fracking of gas, which would pollute the waterways and the air and so on. And towards the end of that campaign, which lasted four years, we had the, a huge protest camp at a small um, farming area near Lismore called Bentley. And this camp was highly managed and organized and it was managed by different teams of people taking care of the huge number of tasks that it would take to feed and, and um, have people um, staying in the middle of a huge cow paddock. That, was, that cow paddock was next to um, the land where they were going to bring in the, the drill rig to frack for gas. So there was a rotating team of people. And this is one of the jobs, but it's the one that I particularly noticed. That start, They staffed the entry gate to that property from 5.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. on a rotating basis every day for a month or, or, or just a month or more. So all tasks in the camp were um, organized by rosters such as this. And I had incredible gratitude for the people taking on the tasks, but especially that road crew, because they were right opposite where I was sitting in an office, filling rosters and available for any little spats or conflict that might have arose. So I saw Every day, the diligence of the road crew in their high-vis yellow jackets and their long wand torches at night, every time I entered and left that site. So I found from this experience that gratitude flows into one's body at a cellular level. And this is how I came to um, experience this, because some months later, when I was driving to work, for some forgotten reason, I took a different route and I went past a school. And so at the school, there was, of course, a pedestrian crossing. And of course, there was a, a fellow there in a high-vis yellow jacket, but he had a flag, not a torch. 
And what happened was just sitting at that pedestrian crossing, waiting for the children to safely cross, I was triggered to the memory of the um, gate crew at Bentley. And I was amazed that a hugely strong, enlivening sensation of love flooded through my body. It was quite extraordinary. And I knew it was the latent wake of gratitude resting that had been resting in my muscles and bones. So it's a very beautiful thing that, uh, that you can cultivate in that way. And another roster that um, also um, was happening there that triggered me later on was that there were four intersections where um, we thought the drill rig or, you know, around that Bentley site, quite some distance away, that we thought the drill rig might arrive and we thought they'd probably try and do it at night. But we had it staffed all the time. Anyway, there was someone there from, from dawn, from dusk till dawn. And I used to see that car um, sitting, at, you know, a car, generally the same one, sitting at the intersection on the times that I drove home. And when I came back to the camp the next day at 5.30 a.m., that car was, was still there. So I had enormous gratitude for the dedication that people would sit at these four intersections all night. I mean, it did suit some people. I don't know what they did, but they quite liked the job. Anyway, I was driving to the coast one day and there was just a random car sitting at an intersection. And the same thing happened. I had this incredible burst of love uh, sensations flow through my body. So it was, it, it, it um, really speaks to how bringing that, um, how the body remembers when you do good things for your heart and mind. The body remembers it, just like it sadly remembers trauma. It also beautifully remembers joy, the joy and happy things like that. And it's also a very good antidote if your body is carrying the memory of trauma because it, it helps to sort of shift that the um, disrupted nervous system to a more settled nervous system. So I believe that gratitude is a powerful precursor of love. It's a form of love because it's a receptivity and a recognition of how we are fully dependent on so many things in life that are provided by other people, by the rivers, the plants, the oceans, the sun, and the complex relationships between, us, between all of us, between um, the plants and the oceans and the natural resources and so on, and all of us. So gratitude also supports mindfulness practice because it requires us to be aware of what is um, what, what we are meeting at our sense doors, our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and consciousness. So that is a practice of mindfulness because all information arrives at our sense doors and we can we meet it again and again and again and if we can meet it with that open-hearted receptivity of gratitude then we are helping to calm our hearts and minds so gratitude it's a bit like greeting a greeting of experience a greeting of the world and as you know, well, most greetings are uplifting. Maybe there's some that are not, but most greetings are quite uplifting. So another way you can bring practice into your daily life is that when you next greet someone, you can bring mindfulness to that greeting by remembering to be conscious of the greeting process the sensations, the emotions, the feelings, the mind states, and so on. And you may also remember to feel the open receptivity of gratitude for the person and what they contribute to the world. So this is a, an example of how we can cultivate a quality. And you may think of other ways that, that work for you. 
but it's a way to bring our practice into our daily life. So I want to say more about um, the things we take for granted. This is a very big field, the things we take for granted. And it's difficult to have gratitude, for example, of the for the water, say, that's flowing out of your tap. But I've got that embedded in my bones because I lived for five years when we first came to this land here. I lived without running water and I had a young baby. So now my water for decades has come through from a spring, which is about 700 metres up the hill from me and it flows down a pipe. Now there's lots of things that can go wrong with that flow. So every time I turn the tap on, there is a wave of gratitude. So then you see if you can find something in your life that you take for granted and start to um, bring some gratitude to that. So, you know, the things that we take for granted, the trees that are all around us that are breathing in our carbon dioxide and breathing out oxygen, that exchange that is going on between us all the time, that mutual breathing process, that we can have gratitude with um, the plants and the water and, and the air and so on that we depend so much on. And what about gratitude for things that don't happen? Last year, I was grateful that the rural fire service was successful in keeping the fires contained that were 4.5 kilometers from our farm. The fire didn't, didn't reach here. Well, maybe you can be grateful that you have not contracted the virus. I hope you haven't that there's gratitude in that, even though there's lots of difficulties surrounding um, that, the pandemic that we're facing. So another um, more difficult form of gratitude is being grateful for the difficult times that have happened in your life. And sometimes that's incredibly hard while the difficult times are happening, but we often may feel that gratitude in retrospect. So has anyone felt that gratitude in retrospect? Just maybe show up your hands if you've felt the gratitude in retrospect. Has anyone felt it during the difficult time? Oh, well, good on you. So that is also a powerful, that you know that this, this whatever disruption or painful thing is happening in your life is creating the conditions for your, for your wisdom and growth. So gratitude is a very powerful practice. It's something that is, it, nourish, it deeply nourishes us and it deeply connects us with anything that we are feeling gratitude towards. And there's always something, even in, you know, there might be, well, we've all got difficult people in our lives or we might have difficult family members, but there's always something in that person that we can feel some gratitude towards. And then it softens our relationship with the situation and it opens our heart. So I really invite you to bring that practice of gratitude into your life if that um, if that feels right for you so just may we rest in the spaciousness of gratitude may we rest in the spaciousness of gratitude and may you be peaceful and happy thank you for listening and let's just have a moment's silence <laughs>